It's rugged and it's beautiful. But up here in Cape York, a thousand kilometres from anywhere, the odds can be stacked against Indigenous youth. But in the race for dominance between footy and league, the AFL is creating the kind of pathways that offer hope, resilience, and a reason for these kids to believe in themselves. Travelling by four-wheel drive on what is a 2,000 kilometre return trip, around 80 Indigenous kids head to the Aboriginal community of Famaga on the Cape York Peninsula. The adventure culminates in the annual Chris Johnson Cup, named in honour of Brisbane's three-time Premiership player who travels with them. He's been doing it for years now, and for very good reason. You know, some, some of these kids come from single parent backgrounds and some don't have any parents at all. They live in the, in the uh, Cape York boarding house as well. So, you know, it's really good to find out their stories and just being up here and being a role model and being a mentor to them is uh, quite uh, rewarding, but certainly give them a bit of a sounding sort of board or someone to talk to at the same time. And it's amazing when you're out in this country in this beautiful landscape, you have, just have so many people or so many young kids that just open up and start talking about things that they probably normally wouldn't talk to you about on the the football field or in a football uh, club rooms or actually in the classroom so you know bringing the kids out here in this environment I think Rick and his team do a fantastic job it gets them back to country it gets them back to where their their ancestors have been and, and actually gets them to see a part of the Cape York as well and I think that sort of ingrains in them and then they're able to open up and talk about things that they may probably never would talk about. And in a region plagued by health and substance abuse issues AFL Cape York General Manager Rick Hanlon sets out to light a spark in these kids and offer them a little hope for the future. We can learn in many ways and, and I'm just trying to, with our team, just trying to provide an opportunity and opportunities for young kids to experience life outside a classroom, in a classroom, in different variations of, of what, what's offered outside their communities. Yeah. Um, we're not about taking kids away from community or anything like that. If our kids want to continue to live in the community, that's wonderful. But what will your impact be in your community? How will you act in your community? What sort of person will you be in your community? Will you be a positive person or a negative person? Will you be a person that gets aggressive with your partner? Will you be a person that's going to look after your kids? But my real ambition is for our young people to grow old. Yeah. Um, the sad reality is I've, 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 I've dealt with young kids in our program that I'll probably outlive. Um, we work in some communities where life expectancy for some, for the average for many is 43, 44. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably, if that continues, I'll, I'll outlive some young fellas that come through our program. So that's not right. So if we can create opportunities for our young people to grow old and uh, have good experiences and be healthy, and I think we're doing a pretty good job.